So welcome everyone. We're gonna get started in a seated position. So just find a way that you can sit comfortably and it might be that you sit on the floor with a little bit of elevation under your seat, like a folded blanket like I've got or a cushion or even a yoga block. But if you find that when you sit on the ground, your back is really um, rounded, then come right up to a chair. We can do all the same things sitting on a chair or the edge of your couch. So when you've got yourself all set up, just rest your hands wherever they can be comfortable so that your shoulders can soften and relax. Sit with a sense of alertness to your spine. There's a little bit of a sense of length to your spine without adding more tension. We want to be alert but relaxed. And when you're ready, you can soften or close your eyes. And begin by simply drawing your attention inward. And take a little bit of time to check in with yourself and simply notice how you feel from the inside out. And try to notice with kindness as if you're checking in on a good friend. So if you find that any critique or commentary comes to mind when you pay attention to how you feel, you can just allow that to float on by. Keep a kind observing attention. And now direct your focus to your breath. And same thing, just notice how does your breath feel right now? And we're bringing a little bit more awareness to the sensations of movement that come with our breath. So to start off with, just rest your hands on your chest or anywhere on your rib cage that's comfortable for you. And just notice, can you sense any movement at your rib cage as you inhale and exhale? Maybe notice as well, if you sense some movement here that you don't have to do anything on purpose, that gentle rhythm is happening on its own, whether you're paying attention or not. Now bring your hands and your attention right down to your belly. We'll do the same thing. Just get curious. Do you sense any movement here at your belly? Okay, and now let's try a breathing practice. We'll do a three-part breath today. So what this means is when you inhale, just picture drawing the air all the way down to your low ribs and filling first the bottom third of your ribs and then the middle, <laughs> lungs, I mean, not ribs, <laughs> the middle third, and then finally the top third. And when we exhale, we'll do that in reverse. So. Imagine emptying the top third of your lungs, the middle third, and finally the bottom third. So we'll start off together and then just keep going for a few rounds of breath, but allow your breath to move naturally as you do this. You don't have to force anything. Just picture that sense of the three-part breath as you go with your natural breathing. So just bring your attention back to your breath. 
And as you inhale, imagine first filling the bottom third of your lungs, and the middle third, and the top third. And then when you exhale, empty the top third, and the middle, and the bottom. And now just keep going at your own pace. Try it out. See how it feels. Let's take one more breath like this. And then just allow that focus to blur, to float away as your breath comes back to its natural, normal rhythm. And let's start to move with our breath. As you inhale, float your arms up, bring your palms together. And as you exhale, trace your hands down the center line of your body. Let's do that a few more times. If it feels comfortable for you, you can allow this movement to follow the rhythm of your breath. But you can always take your own pace if you find that you don't like how that feels. And the next time you bring your palms down to the center of your chest, pause here. And with your next inhale, send your right arm up and your left down. Just reach them away from each other. And with an exhale, come back to center. And let's go the other way. And we'll do this a few times. Inhaling as you reach your hands apart and exhaling as you come back to center. Or just going at your own pace. Next time you come back to center, we'll let this one go. Just release your arms, shake them out. Nice, again, rest your hands. Let's just move our shoulders a bit. Just a few circles up and back and a couple times going forward and down. Right, soften, let them come back to stillness. And now let's move our spine a bit. So let's do some seated cat and cows. As you inhale, arch your back, roll your shoulders back. You just tip your gaze up a bit. And then as you exhale, round your back, roll your shoulders forward and curl your chin in closer to your chest. And then keep going. Again, movement following breath or picking your own pace. Make your way back to a neutral spine when you're ready. And then with an inhale, bring your arms back up. And as you exhale, bring your right hand down towards the ground. If your hand doesn't touch the ground easily, then grab a prop and place it under your hand. And add a little bit of length to your spine and then we'll go over into a side bend. Nice, keeping your seat, your legs connected to the ground as you lean over to the side. And then follow an inhale back up. Both arms can reach up for a moment. And then bring the other hand down, placing the props there again if you need. And add some length to your spine before you go over the other way. Take a breath or so right here.
and then come all the way back up. Release your arms, shake them out. Nice. All right, and let's try a twist now. So bring your hands to rest on your low ribs, maybe on the front, maybe on the side. And this is just to bring some awareness to your rib cage. And from here, add some length to your spine again. Not so much that your shoulders want to pop up too. Just picture your spine getting a little bit longer. Nice. And now with an exhale, turn your rib cage to face towards the right a little bit more. And then on an inhale, come back to center. And exhale to go the other way. All right. And same thing here. You can keep going with your breath, just slowly going side to side where you can pick your own pace. I like coming back to center with an inhale, feeling like I could fill my lungs and then exhaling to the side so it feels like you can wring all the air out of your lungs. So experiment, see what feels good for you. And then come on back to center. Let's release your arms, shake them up. Maybe you want to take a few more shoulder circles here. Nice. Let that go. Soften your shoulders. Rest your hands. And let's do a little bit of movement in our neck. So with soft shoulders, just tip your head over to the right. Allowing your ear to come closer to your shoulder. Not so much that the other shoulder lifts up. Just let these guys stay soft and relaxed. And you let your head be heavy here. And then come on back up to center. And tip over the other way for a breath or two. Now let's go side to side a few times. If you like, you can inhale to come back to center and exhale to go to one side or the other. And let's meet back in the middle. Lovely. All right, let's do a little bit more arm movement. So bring your left hand out by your side, bring your right hand to rest on your low ribs like this. Now we're just gonna do some small circles. So circling your hand up and back. And now as you continue with this movement, start to gradually make your circles bigger. And explore how big can you make your circles without your rib cage wanting to shift to accommodate the movement. And now you can either stay with this movement with your rib cage staying still, or you can bring it into the movement with a little bit of a twisty action. So as you bring your arm up, you can let your ribs turn into a twist. Bring your arm a little farther back as you circle around. So do whatever feels more interesting to you. And then we'll let this side go. And let's do that on the other side. So the same thing here, start small. Circling your arm up and back. Gradually growing your circles bigger. See how big you can make those circles without your ribs needing to move. And then you can try out that big twisty movement if you like, just allow your ribs to move naturally as you take nice big circles, reaching your arm behind you a bit as you go.
And then let that one go as well. Have any little movements that you'd like. Lovely. Come back to stillness for a breath. And just tune in again. Notice how you feel now in your breath and in your body. Okay. Now, once again, reach your arms up overhead. Draw your palms together. Trace them down the center line. And now we're going to do this one again, where we reach one arm up and the other down. And try that one or two times. And the next time you have your arms reaching up and down, we're going to add this into a bit of a shoulder stretch. So just bend your elbows and try to bring your hands back to the back of your body. I'm just gonna spin around and show you. It'll look kinda like this. And then, let's do that the other side. Reaching your arms up and down and then bringing them back. And we'll go back and forth a few times like this. Just take your own pace. And your hands don't need to come too far on to the back of your body. Just see where they naturally land when you look for this shape. And the next time you bring your hands onto the back of your body, we'll pause here for a moment and add a bit of a twist. So whichever elbow is pointing up, we're gonna twist in that direction. And think about your ribs leading this movement. So you might not go as far into your twist this time. It's okay. Come on back to center. Float your arms up and down, switching sides. Twist the other way. And then just keep flowing from side to side a few times. Take your own pace. See what range of movement feels comfortable in your arms and in your spine. And when you're ready, let's let this go. Again, shake out your arms. Bring them back to rest. And take a moment to pause and breathe. Okay. And once again, as you inhale, float your arms up. This time, interlace your fingers. And maybe, if it's comfortable, you can flip your palms up towards the ceiling. Nice. Keep your arms here. Feel your connection to the ground through your seat and your legs. And now we'll do some little side bends here, just tipping side to side. And again, it's probably gonna be a bit of a smaller side bend when you don't have one hand on the ground. And just explore. Try to keep that nice connection to the ground. And then come on up to center, release your arms, and then have a bit of movement. Nice. Okay, rest your hands, take a breath. Okay, and let's try another shoulder stretch. So if your shoulders have had enough, then you can do this movement without the shoulders. But if you'd like to try, Bring your arms out in front of you like this. Bend your elbows and bring your forearms together as much as they can comfortably come together. They don't have to touch like mine are here. And then we're gonna just bring the right elbow on top of the left. And if this feels reasonably comfortable, you can stay here. And the alternative is like this, just hold onto your opposite shoulders. So whichever version you have picked, we're gonna stay here and do a little bit of seated cat and cow. So kind of squeezing your elbows together a little bit here. Just round your back into a cat pose and then arch into a cow. And I keep going a couple of times. And the next time you come back through a neutral spine, let's switch the arms. Left elbow on top of right. Staying here, we're going here. Doesn't matter. 
try a few more rounds of cat and cow. Find your neutral spine again. Softly release your arms. Give them a little bit of movement. Nice. Okay. Take a moment here to just pause. All right. Let's give our hips and our legs a little bit of attention now. So we're gonna, gonna come to sitting with our legs straight out in front of us like this. So if you're sitting on something harder, like a block, I would suggest coming down to resting on just a folded blanket or a small cushion or flat down on the ground if that's comfortable for your spine. Okay, and now bend your knees and bring the bottoms of your feet to touch like this. Nice. So they don't need to be right close in. Your feet can be way up here. Whatever feels comfortable for you. Lovely. And then bring your palms together and bring your knees up to kind of meet your elbows like this. Awesome. Okay, from here, all we're going to do is press our knees into our elbows and then let that go and bring your knees down a bit closer to the ground. We're going to go back and forth between these two movements a few times. Okay, let that go. Bring your hands back down. You can choose either staying here in our butterfly pose, or if you want, you can tip forward a little bit, just to get a tiny bit more stretch. So it's up to you. Try, if you're tipping forward, not to really round your back a whole lot. If you can keep your spine fairly neutral and just hinge at your hips, even if it's just a tiny bit, you probably feel a little more stretch. So choose your own adventure here. Let's take a breath or two. All right, come on back up. This time, hold on to the outsides of your knees and bring them back up. Stretch your legs out and just shake them out. Give them whatever movement they would like. Okay, one more seated pose before we go into a different shape. So now bring your legs out into a wide leg position like this. Nice, try not to bring them out as far as you possibly can. Have them a little bit closer together than you can go. Nice, and once you're here, flex your feet so your legs feel like they're active. And now we're just gonna turn side to side. So turn your torso towards your right leg and just let the left leg kind of roll in a little bit. The right might roll out a little bit as well. And then we'll go to the other side. So we're just gonna rock side to side a few times. And so as you rock to the right, your left hip can come off of the ground. Same thing when you go the other way. Just move in a way that feels fairly natural. If this is a really, really big movement for you, bring your legs a little closer together. So just experiment, see what's comfortable for you. And you can stay with this movement if you like or you can add a little bit more as you turn to the side, bending both knees like this and go side to side. And you might find as you do that, if you're coming along for this part of bending your knees, that you can go a little bit farther into a twist in your torso. If you find that, you might wanna bring one arm around and back just like this. So stick with what feels comfortable for you, and we'll try this a couple more times. Okay, let's come back to center. Nice, 
Bring your legs back in, shake them out. Okay, and now let's switch it up. Let's come on up to a tabletop. And as you make your way up to your hands and knees, if you've got some yoga props, you can bring them in now. If you've got blocks, you can set them up at the top of your mat. And if the floor you're practicing on is a bit hard, you can get some padding, blanket or pillow or towel to cushion your knees. So take a moment to just get yourself comfy so that your wrists feel good, your knees feel good. If your wrists are not happy this way, you can always be down on your forearms or even make your hands into a fist. See if that feels better. But once you've found your way here, let's just do a few rounds of cat and cow. Just arching and rounding your back a couple of times. And find your way back to a neutral position for your spine. And let's try a few rounds of cat or um, bird dog, sorry. So start off by lifting your right hand and your left knee just a little bit off the ground. Maybe feel your core muscles start to wake up when you do that. And then let's switch sides. So starting with just this tiny little lift, side to side. And when you feel like you've got a, a sense of balance with this side to side movement, you can add an extra piece here as you lift opposite hand and knee off the ground. And then you can reach your arm and your leg long and do that side to side. Try as you go not to lift your arm and your leg so long that you come into a bit of a, a cow shape in your spine. Try to keep that nice neutral position in your spine. Helps the muscles of our core to stay engaged, helping to stabilize this movement. And you can stick with this or you can add another piece. When you reach your arm and your leg long, you can bring them out to the sides and then come back in. So again, choose your own adventure with these. We'll try a couple more. And then next time you come back to your table, let's stay here and we'll rest for a moment. You can rest in a tabletop, you can come to a seat, or you can sit back to a child's pose, bringing your knees a little wider apart and bringing your big toes together and then sitting your hips back. Find a place where your head can actually rest. So if it doesn't touch the ground easily, bring your hands or a prop underneath your forehead. And when you're ready, let's meet back up in tabletop. All right, let's try some more movement for our hips and legs now. So we'll start in the left leg. Keeping your knee bent, just lift your knee out to the side. And now let's do some circles here. Doesn't have to be huge circles, just see what kind of movement's available here. And you can circle a few times in each direction if you'd like. And then bring your knee back down. Okay, and let's stretch your left leg back behind you and just tuck your toes under like this. And now reach back. We'll see if you could press your heel farther back behind you. And now soften that and bring your leg around to the side. And try and find a position where your leg can be fairly straight and the whole bottom of your foot can be touching the ground, even the outer edge of your foot. And once you've got this shape, press your foot down into the ground and try to pull from your foot 
up to your hip. Now you can choose to either stay right where you are or come up to bring your hands to your hips. I'm just gonna turn the face towards you here. Lovely. Once you're up, can you keep that action of pressing down through your foot and pulling up? And this time maybe picture drawing your um, right leg and your left leg towards each other. Like if you could gather the mat and the floor up between your knee and your foot. Nice. And then if you like, you can add a bit of arms here, reaching your right arm up. And then coming into a bit of a side bend. And you can slide the other hand down your leg a little bit if you'd like. This is gatekeeper pose. Let's take a breath or two here, whichever version you are in. And then slowly come back up. And bring your hands right back down to the ground. Lovely, and now we're gonna take this leg and swing it all the way forward so that we're coming into a low lunge like this. Nice, and feel free to use those blocks if you've got them at any time to help with these movements. They help to kind of make your arms a little longer. And then once you've got your lunge shape, feel your front foot and your back knee on the ground and squeeze them towards each other as you lift up and bring your hands back to your hips. Beautiful. All right. So a few options here as well. You can stay right where you are, or you can bring your arms up. Maybe interlace your fingers, press your palms up, and let's do some tiny side bends here. They might be even smaller than when we did this on the ground. And what you might like to do to get a little bit more stable is to walk the front foot a little out to the side. So you've got a wider stance for your lunge. And then come on back to center, release your arms, shake them out. Okay, and from here, we're gonna go into a plank pose. So bring your hands down, right down to the ground. If you've been using blocks, set them off to the side so your hands can be right on the ground. And we're gonna make our way back to a plank. Either option one, come back to your tabletop and then come up to your plank, or you can lift your back um, knee off the ground like this, and then send the front foot back. Nice, I'm just gonna move my knee padding out of the way here. And once you've found your plank pose, just stay here for a breath or two. And now let's come all the way down. Knees, belly, and chest all the way down to the ground. Take a moment once you're here to just pause. And when you're ready, let's move into a cobra pose. So bring your hands to the ground by the sides of your ribs. Once you've got that, roll your shoulders up and back. Think about pulling your shoulder blades down towards your heels. Nice. Rock your hips side to side a little bit so you can kind of notice where your pelvis is in space. We want a nice connection between our pelvis and the ground. Once you've got that awareness, lengthen through your spine, reach the crown of your head forward, and then peel your head and your chest up away from the ground. And let's take a breath or so right here. And when you're ready, come on back down. Let your head rest, let your arms rest. You can rock your hips side to side again, see if that feels good for your back. And when you're ready, let's meet back up in tabletop again. All 
right. When you've found your way back to your table, we'll do some of those leg movements on the right side. So starting with some hip circles, bring your knee out to the side, circle your knee around. Take a few spins in each direction. And then bring your leg right back behind you, tuck your toes under, press back through your heel for a couple of breaths. And then softly swing your leg around to the side. Find our gatekeeper legs here with the right leg straight, your foot touching the ground. And then bring some engagement to your legs, press your foot down, drag up from your foot up to your hip. And then you can choose either stay right where you are or come on up, bring your hands to your hips. Nice, keep your legs active, pulling right leg and left leg towards each other, keeping your right foot pressing into the ground. And another choice, stay right here or bring your left arm up and then side bend a bit. Find your gatekeeper pose on this side. Take a couple of breaths wherever you are. Softly come on back up, bring your arm down, bring your hands right down to the ground and then bring your right leg all the way up for your low lunge. And once you've got your lunge shape, bring some engagement to your legs again, try to squeeze right leg and left leg towards each other. Come on up. Nice. Okay, and now that we're here, you can stay right here or you can try out one of those little arm and spine movements again. If you liked your side bend, you can do that again. Or the other option is to do this guy with our hands coming back to touch the back of the body and then doing a little bit of a twist. So same thing here, if you find that you need a little bit more stability in your legs, it might be nice to walk the front foot out to the side. So you have a little bit of a wider stance. And then if you're trying out this arm and spine movement, you can switch your arms around, see how it feels going this way. Okay, let's let this go. Release your arms, bring your hands down to the ground. And here, if you've got your blocks, you're welcome to bring your blocks under your hands. We're going into a forward fold at the top of our mat. So tuck your toes under on that back foot, lift your back knee up away from the ground, shift your weight forward and step that back foot forward. Nice. Once you're in your forward fold, bend your knees, let your head hang down. Let's take a breath here. And with your next inhale, lift yourself about halfway up. Let your hands rest on your legs and try to lengthen for your spine a little bit here. As if you could reach your tail back behind you, reach the crown of your head forward. And with an exhale, soften your knees and lower all the way back down. And then with your next inhale, come on all the way back up. And once you're up to standing, if you wish, you can reach your arms up a little bit. And then let them back down. Nice. Have a bit of a shake. Take a moment of just standing in stillness. And take this opportunity to check in with yourself again. Notice how you feel now in your breath and in your body. Nice. 
Great. Let's try out some stretches and some standing poses. So if you have a blanket or a towel, we'll, uh, we're gonna roll it up so that we can do a bit of a calf stretch. And if you don't have a blanket or towel, or if you have one that's really squishy, so you <laughs> wouldn't be able to have much height in it, then roll up your mat. Generally our mats are firm enough that you can get a bit of a lift when you roll it up. All right, so whichever version you got, let's make a nice roll. And what we're gonna do with this is just step one foot onto it. So you want the blanket or the mat to be high enough away from the ground that when you stand your toes onto one, on, onto the blanket and have your heel on the ground, you can feel a bit of stretch. So just take a moment to get yourself set up using whatever props you've got. The other option, if you find either one of those don't work for you, if you've got a, a block, you can stand on it like this. Depending on the size of your block, that might work or it might not. Okay, so when you've got that, let's start with the first foot coming up onto the blanket roll. So the toe side of your foot can be on the blanket and your heel can be right down on the ground. And see how this one feels. I like to step the other foot right up behind the roll. And if this feels like a really good stretch, then stay here. If you want more, step that other foot right in front of the blanket roll like this. So pick your version of this position and then check in with the bottom of your feet. Notice if you're leaning more into one foot or the other. And try to kind of balance your weight on both feet evenly. Right, then let's just take a few breaths here. When you are ready to let this one go, just softly step back. Just maybe give your leg a little shake. Okay, let's switch sides. So take a moment to get yourself set up. It might be very different on the second side. See what actually works for you. Your foot behind the roll or in front. And take a few breaths wherever you land here. Trying again to evenly distribute your weight on both feet. And when you're ready, slowly come on back to both feet flat on the ground. And just take a breath here. Okay, let's do one more thing with this blanket or mat roll. If you've been using a block, then it won't work for this one. So if that's what you've been doing, you can do this with your feet flat on the ground. But if you do have your blanket or your mat rolled up, you can just come to stand right in front of that roll. Nice. And before we do anything with the roll, let's do just a couple simple forward folds. So bring your hands to your hip crease area. And now we're gonna try to fold forward and just let our spine stay nice and neutral. So not rounding or arching, just staying fairly straight. <laughs> and just hinge at your hips to fold forward. And you don't need to go very far. Just get the feeling of folding at your hips.
And when we come back up to standing, let's step our heels back onto the blanket. So this time toes on the ground, heels lifted up. And stand your feet a little bit wider than hip width distance apart. And here we're gonna go into a bit of a squat. So I always like to add a little bit of external rotation so that my toes are pointing out to the side a little bit, but see what's comfortable for you. And when we try the squat, you might find that you wanna rearrange your legs and that's fine. So bring your hands back to your hip creases. And now all we're gonna do is bend our knees and also hinge at your hips a little bit. So you're coming into your little squat like this and come on right back up. And we're just gonna go down and up a few times. Check that you're not just bending at your knees and keeping your hips fairly neutral. We wanna have a little bit of a bend. So our hip joints, our knee joints, and our ankle joints are doing some work here. The blanket roll just makes this a bit easier on your ankles. You're welcome to do your squat with your feet flat on the floor as well. Just try this out a couple of times. So you can just explore how far can you go in your little squat here. You don't have to go too far. It's just about getting some nice movement in these joints. And now you can choose. You can keep with that up and down movement or you can come down into your squat, whatever level your squat's at and just hang out here for a breath or two. If you're coming up down close to the ground like I am, what you can do is bring your elbows inside your knees and add that action of pressing your knees into your elbows, just like we did with our butterfly pose. But if you're up here, don't worry about that part. All right, and when you're ready, let's meet up in standing. Come on back to both feet flat on the ground and give it a bit of a shake. Beautiful, all right. Take one breath in stillness, just notice how you feel. Okay, and now let's move on to a standing pose. So make yourself some space on your mat. You can set that blanket roll off to the side or unroll your mat if you've had it rolled up. And here, if you have a block, you can set that right in the front of you and face towards the long edge of your mat. So it's gonna come into a wide leg stance. And if you don't have a block, another thing you can do is have a chair in front of you or you can even do this facing the wall. So you've got that as a support. One of the things we're gonna do here is a, a wide leg forward fold, but we'll get there in a minute. So to start off with, come into a wide leg stance. Doesn't have to be a huge wide leg stance. It can be wherever you feel comfortable. Nice. And so here, start off with your legs in kind of a neutral position so your toes aren't pointing out or pointing in too much, kind of pointing straight ahead. Bring your hands to your hips. And now we're gonna change that up. So press into the ball of your foot on each foot and then lift your heels up and spin them in a little bit. So now your toes will be pointing out to the side and we're shortening our stance a little bit when we do that. Nice. And with your hands on your hips, we're going to come into goddess pose. So bend your knees, let your knees move out to the side, kind of like a super wide leg squat we're coming into. Nice. And now we're going to lift and lower a few times. And you can keep your hands on your hips or you could add some arms here. As you come down into goddess pose, you can bring your arms out into a cactus shape like this, palms facing forward. And as you straighten your arms or your legs, sorry, you can bring your arms up. And just keep going a few times. And then you can choose. You can keep going up and down with your goddess pose or you can take a few breaths right here. And wherever you are, let's come back up to standing with straight legs. 
Nice. And then press into the ball of the foot and spin your heel out again so that your legs are in a more neutral shape. Your toes are pointing forward. Rearrange your stance if you need to. We're going to go into our wide leg forward fold now. So find your hip creases again. We're going to do the same thing as we did with the first forward fold. Try to allow your spine to stay neutral as you hinge at your hips. If you've got a block or a chair in front of you, you can bring that under your hands. And you have two options here. You can stay right here with your spine fairly neutral, or if you would like, you can curl your spine to come a little bit farther forward into your forward fold. So wherever you are, we'll take a few breaths here. And then another option for you. You can stay right here in the middle of your forward fold, or you can add a little bit of side to side movement, just bending one knee and moving your hips over in that same direction. And then going to the other side. And you just go side to side if you'd like a few times. And make your way back to center if you're not already there. And now let's start to slowly come up with strong legs. Bring your hands to your hips and hinge back up. Beautiful. Now just heel toe your feet back towards each other. And once you're back up to standing, give everything a bit of a shake. Nice. All right, take a moment again, check in with yourself. How does everything feel now? Just notice. Okay. And now let's come right back down to our mat. We're gonna come down to laying down and we'll do one stretch and then we're gonna move into Shavasana or any resting pose that you'd like. So if you wanna grab blankets or pillows or anything that you might like for your resting pose, you can have them nearby. So you can easily grab them once we're done our little stretch. So make your way onto your back when you're ready. Once you're here, bend your knees and have your feet on the floor. If they're not already there. And then lift one leg up towards the ceiling. And then we're just gonna bend our knee, turn that knee out to the side and cross your ankle over the other knee. And this is our figure four stretch. And you can stay right here if this feels like a good place for you to be. Or you can lift the other foot up off of the ground. And here you can either hold on to that leg, or if that's a real reach for you, you can have a strap or a belt or whatever you've got and just thread it through here so you can hold on to either end and the strap can hold on to your leg. So choose which version you'd like. And let's take a breath or two here. And then when you're ready, unravel your legs, bring both feet back down. And let's do that on the other side. We'll bring the other leg up, bend your knee, move it out to the side, cross ankle over knee. Option one is to stay right here. Option two is to lift the other leg up and hold on to that leg with your hands or your strap and your hands. Now let's breathe here, two or three breaths.
And when you are ready to let this one go, again, unravel your legs. Bring everything back down. And then take any kind of little stretches or movements that you like here. Okay, and we're ready for our resting pose. So you can choose any position that's comfortable for you. It doesn't have to be laying on the ground. You can come up to a seat as well if that suits you better. Take a few moments to really get yourself comfortable. And when you're ready, use your breath to begin to settle into this position, to bring your focus back to your breathing. And as you inhale, just imagine breathing in a sense of softening, just allowing the ground or whatever it is you're resting on to support you. And every time you breathe out, can you imagine just breathing out any kind of tension, any kind of effort. And we'll stay here just resting for a few more minutes. 